we're going to be playing Universe Sandbox 2 and randomly terraforming random things at random times. Let's see if we can uh, make uh, a really simple system where everything is terraformed, specifically a, a gas giant that has everything terraformed around it. In other words, we're gonna have a bunch of moons, kind of like, think of Jupiter. So if I were, if I were to go here and open one of the core systems, the ones that have everything in it, solar system, system with all planets, all moons. If I were to go here and look at, where is Jupiter? Look at Jupiter. And uh, actually, look, look how uh, wide its um, moons uh, orbit around it. The size of the orbits of moons of Jupiter is pretty large in comparison to the rest of the solar system. Anyway, so if we zoom in here, look at Jupiter and look at its major moons. Um, someone suggested that why don't you terraform or create a, a new system where everything is terraformed and it's it's basically a, uh, it's basically a gas giant with you know a habitable system around it. So I figured uh, let's try to make that. Um, let's start by making a gas giant. Uh, this is actually another suggestion from someone else. We're gonna start with something uh, Let's make a gas giant out of Pluto. Uh, NASA has recently released some really awesome photos of Pluto that actually changed our understanding of its surface a lot. So this, which is I believe called... Oh, I forgot the name for this. I should know the name for this. Anyway, it's the heart-shaped region that apparently is actually... It's all ice. This is all ice, but it's actually... I think it's nitrogen ice or, or something. Um, and uh, Pluto does have uh, ice liquid sort of rotation like Earth, uh, and except that it's, it's ice and it's liquids are very, very different from ours. It's not water, it's um, nitrogen. Call you HC. All right, uh, welcome HC. All right, so we're going to make this into a gas giant. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use the power thing in my jig here. Where is it? Here. Uh, throw materials at it. I was, I was playing around this tool and it's actually pretty cool. So if you were to go here and you set this velocity at like zero, and then lots of lots of particles, little little spread, and then you change this to like I don't know, like I'll just say a thousand times more than it's giving you, and then you just kind of like randomly. Oh yeah, you may want to pause the game. Randomly place these things around, kind of like this. It actually it kind of it kind of does some awesome things. I'll show you what it does in a second. Let me just uh, accelerate this to let's say sec minutes per minutes per second. So all this stuff is going to get attracted to Pluto, and you'll see it grow in a second. This is all hydrogen, by the way. We're just going to throw hydrogen at it. Is it working? Oh, no, maybe it's too heavy. If the things are heavier than Pluto, Pluto is going to start moving around, but these things will not fly toward it. Unless I'm just not... Oh, here we go. Hey, look at that. It's flying toward Pluto, and boom! Look at that. Beautiful gas giant called Pluto. And it's kind of like cyanine blue e yellow e green e in color i was expecting a little bit more exotic color but we'll have to live with that for now uh so this is pluto as a gas giant uh let's finish it up oh yeah i have a new follower yay thank you for subscribing or following me uh let's just add some more stuff to it we're gonna make it into what's called a brown dwarf basically it is an almost star but not really a star it is a, a gas giant that grew to size of about 60 times the Jupiter and essentially has become um, a really, 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 really hot gas giant. Uh, okay, so I need some more. Come on, throw more stuff at it. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not doing this right. I should be not pointing at it, but pointing away from it. Here. Haha. -ha. Victory is mine. And anything? Anything? Oh, it's still coming. These things are they take a while to get to to that planet. And so oh, look at that. Growing so big. Uh, so this is going to be our um, central, I guess you could call it uh, object, uh, sort of like the sun or the star, but it's not really a sun or the star. It's just gonna have its own satellites around it. Uh, and at some point, Actually, at this point right now, I think I'm gonna change its uh, rotation as well. I wanted to, I wanted to spin a little bit faster because we wanted to have uh, a bit of um, a momentum. So let's just say it's gonna spin spin it around one meter per second. 
No, that's that's kind of slow, right? Rotation period. Eight. No, that's that's way too slow. Uh, how about uh, five fifty thousand meters per second? No, it's too fast. How about one kilometer per second? There we go. That's good. So now it has some spin because we want to give it some momentum, uh, possibly because we're going to be turning into um, uh, a neutron star afterwards. Because why not? We can do things like that. Okay. So it's at uh, 10 times the Jupiter right now. 10 times the mass of Jupiter. Ooh, we missed something. There was actually a, a point where it became some sort of an ice, ice cinemagic. Let's look at this material. Okay, so it's mostly hydrogen so far. There's a little bit of silicates. Uh, a more realistic way would be this. About 5% silicates, a little bit of iron, uh, and the rest hydrogen. Uh, just to, to show you the comparison of this to Earth, this is what Earth would look like. Let's make it actually uh, spin around just for fun. Oh, too fast. Way too fast. Here we go. Here's Earth flying around this uh, Pluto gas giant. And uh, we're going to be making it into an even larger object. This Earth is going to get swallowed at some point, so that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. It's going to disappear from existence very, very, very soon. And I want to throw more Earths at it. Oh, that didn't do anything. Oh, no, I did a little bit. All right, so let's uh, maybe... Oh, whoa! No, 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 no. No, go back. Go back to where... Oh, I threw too much stuff at it. I swallowed my Earth, turned to a star. Hey, no, go back. Can I take you back to 50 hey good manual adjustment uh, take you back to 30 20 okay this is not doing anything I think th this is actually I think impact from earth that smacked into it um, I kind of screwed up a little bit I think it, it is a gas giant but I'm not entirely sure not entirely sure if I can cool it down a little bit. Oh, here we go. Look at that beautiful transformation. Now it's falling in temperature and it's back to being Pluto again. Yay, that was pretty awesome. All right, let's, uh, let's just manually change this to 30. 30 masses of Jupiter. Uh, the temperature is currently 332 degrees Celsius. It's not too hot, not too cold. Oh, look at that. It started to get those like fire looking things. I'm sure there's a scientific term for, th for that. I just don't know what that is. I'm gonna make it spin faster. Uh, here we go. It's spinning the wrong way though, but it's okay. And um, we're gonna increase it to 45 times Jupiter. And it's gonna get some more color here. Awesome, look at that. It's beautiful. This is transformation of a gas giant into what would we would call a brown dwarf. Uh, Alright, at 50 times Jupiter, it's gonna get even hotter and acquire even more stuff. So what I'm trying to do here right now is to get it to become hot enough so it starts radiating heat. So we can actually use it as a kind of a, um, almost like a star uh, thing. Basically, it's going to be a very highly radioactive gas giant. Jupiter by itself is also radioactive, but um, it's not as radioactive as this is going to be. This is kind of like almost living like next to a nuclear reactor, essentially. Uh, this is kind of eerie. Look at that. It's like an eye looking at me. Oh, it's creepy. Um, uh, let's make it... Can I make it 70 without turning into the sun? Oh, look at that. We can. All right, so 70 times of Jupiter. The temperature is now over a thousand degrees Celsius, and I believe it, it is radiating enough heat to support uh, satellite bodies. I hope it does. I don't know if it does. We're also going to give it a little bit of... A little bit of what? Uh, it has a rotation. It has all this other stuff. Uh, let's add Titan. Even though that's actually Saturn's um, satellite, we're gonna add Titan at a distance of about a moon's distance of about 300,000 kilometers. And let's see how it uh, how it does in terms of uh, heat and work and so on. Because I want to see if this is going to be a viable viable. Uh, system for us. So Titan is right here. Is it going to be tidally locked? Can tidally lock it to everything? Where is the tidal lock thing? Uh, oh, it is already tidally locked. Okay, good. Uh, now, tidal lock means that it's always facing the same direction as it spins, but I don't think it's actually doing that. Yeah, it's not tidally locked. What are you talking about? 
What am I talking about? I don't know. It's supposed to be tidally locked. Position lock? No. Tidal lock. Here we go. Did that work? Yeah, it worked. Alright, perfect. So it's now going to be facing with the same side. Which is maybe not a good idea, actually, because that means it's only one side is going to be heated. Ah, uh, whatever. We'll figure it out. Uh, now, let's see what the temperature here is. And it is... Why is it so low? It should be higher than that. Uh, let's look at temperature here. Is it getting anything from, from, the, from the radiation here? It should be getting stuff. Albedo, radiative power. Um, the cool thing about Titan is um, it actually has more atmospheric pressure than Earth. So if you were to stand right here, uh, you would experience atmospheric pressure about 130% of that of Earth. So it's like 1.3 atmospheres. And it's atmospheres from, um, from like nitrogen and stuff. It has a lot of nitrogen on its surface. Okay, so that means that this is not really working for some reason. I was hoping this would work. It's not really giving me anything, unless it increases more. I don't think this is gonna do anything. Uh, is it because it's not a realistic mode? Can I change it to realistic? Let's find out. Let's let's solve this. Okay, so we have position lock. Maybe I do have to turn it into a, a tiny, tiny star. Let's see if this changes anything. Let's change it to 80. Okay, so now it's definitely a tiny, tiny star. And, of course... They get radiative power. Okay, so why is this a thing when it's a star, but not when it's um, a gas giant? And look at that, They're, all of them turn into comets. This is now a super ultra hot planet, and also known as a very large comet. Um, Alright, so mm, I'm gonna try to go back a little bit until it changes back to the gas giant and see if anything changes. Because that kind of ruins my plan of having a gas giant as a kind of a main body. Okay, this is, I think this is the smallest, um, or the largest kind of a gas giant we can have before it turns into a star. At a mass of 104 Jupiters. Its temperature is now 2500 degrees Celsius. It's very, very bright. This is a really bright gas giant. And we are getting nothing. We're getting nothing from it. Ah, uh, that's not cool. All right, so you know what? Um, we're gonna just ha end up maybe t turning into a, a star, a very, very, very small star, a star that w used to be a gas giant but no longer a gas giant. So this is Pluto as a star. Uh, I think Titan and Europa are a little bit too close to it, though. So let's let's take a look at its at its um, habitable zone. Where is it? Is it gonna show it to me or not? City lines. No, there's nothing. Uh, I think. It's, ooh, look at that! That's so cool. That is like an awesome spiral going on here. That is beautiful. This is the um, projections from both Titan and Europa, because they kind of are. They're, they've turned into like little comets. They're actually em emitting a lot of stuff. Um, and look at that. That is so cool. Uh, so because they're so close to the star, they're actually actively losing 1.3 masses of Earth per year. And this is actually very realistic. I, they've added this in, I think, Alpha 15, maybe even before that, where if you're really close to the star, they actually um, uh, they start emitting their own mass. So this is going to start losing mass. If, if I actually accelerate this, Oh, and this is what's happening to Mercury as well. If you look at that, look at its mass. It's actually decreasing. 1.71, 1.70 of the moon. <laughs> Let's wait for it to disappear. I'm kind of curious what's going to happen. Let's wait for it to disappear. Accelerate time even more. It's going to turn into a tiny, tiny piece of rock. So that's because they're so close to the sun. And th I think this is pretty realistic. Uh, I mean, every time a comet passes by the sun, it actually loses a huge amount of mass. Uh... So yeah, the temperature is currently uh, minus 70 degrees Celsius. Uh, crash Pluto into Mars. 
I can do that. Yeah, we can do that right now, actually. Let's uh, let's add Pluto and crash Mars into it. No, let's add Mars and crash Pluto into it. Uh, so, while these guys are warming up, both of these are still kind of cold. Uh, this one is not warming up at all. What's going on here? Are you not getting any heat? Yeah, you are getting heat. I think you need, to, uh, you need atmosphere. We're going to add atmosphere to this guy and then crash Pluto into Mars. Uh, temperature, atmospheric mass. Give me some atmosphere. Give me one atmospheric thing of atmosphere. Wait, no, what? Here. Atmospheric pressure of one. Jung. Excellent. Uh, this is going to be in kilograms. So hopefully it will heat up now. And let's add Mars. We're going to add Mars right here. It's going to be our next object of interest. And Mr. Mars. Oh, look at that. So as soon as I add a new thing, it starts being a comet. That's interesting. Well, anyway, Mr. Mars, uh, or Mrs. Mars, I'm not sure. Uh, do you like Pluto? I like Pluto. I really like Pluto. Pluto likes you. Okay, where well, should we... Uh... Oh, yeah, it has to be... I have to actually use the other thing. I have to, I have to project it. Launch an object, a minor object called Pluto. Uh, let's slow this down a little bit. And... Let's see, if it misses, it's gonna go into the sun, so let's do from this direction. Alright, cool, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Uh, so here it comes, here's Pluto. I hope it hits it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's coming toward, toward Mars. It's gonna be really slow motion um, uh, collision here. Oh, here it comes, here it comes. They're so red, why are they so red? Surface temperature minus 46 degrees. I kind of like how they added all these really awesome effects. This is projecting a lot of things into the outer, um, outer solar system. Or I guess it's outer Pluto system now. Uh, so, should we stand on the surface of one? Wait, where are you going? Are you not? No. No. Oh, it's going to miss. Is it going to miss? Look at that big shadow. Don't miss. No. Oh, I missed. How did I miss it? How did we miss this? Jeer. Come back, Pluto. I mean, what? Wait. Yeah. This is Pluto. I thought I was standing on Pluto. I was standing on Mars. Um, all right. So let's do let's do something else. Let's uh, use power of fireworks. No, not fireworks. Uh, explosions. Here we go. Here we go. It's going to be power of explosion. Boom. I said boom, but, but, but boom, boom. Why is it not working? Huh? 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 What am I doing wrong? It's supposed to work. Oh no, is this a bug? No, it's a bug. Uh, it's not exploding. Fireworks. <laughs> uh, pulse. I don't know what I'm doing here. I mean, I know what I'm doing. I don't know why it doesn't work. Let's try this again. I, I kind of want this to work. There we go. Okay, so it exploded. So now Pluto has exploded into tiny little pieces. It has a bunch of fragments flying. But we're going to launch another Pluto. We're going to launch another Pluto a little bit closer this time. And because I want to see a collision too. Collisions are awesome. Let's actually launch it at this ice uh, cap that Mars has. Um, this is actually a water ice cap, I believe. And it's, some people say it's CO2, but some people say it's water. I think it's water. We don't really know yet. We know, but we don't know. Uh, Pluto, meet Mars. Mars, meet Pluto. Be friends. Okay, let's do it from here. Whoa, no, I didn't, we didn't get to see the collision. Oh, look at that explosion. Look at that huge explosion. Holy crap. That is really big. That is really big and awesome. But we didn't get to, we didn't get to see the planet approaching, it, um, approaching Mars. Anyway, so we're going to do it again. We're gonna do it again. That is so cool. Holy crap. That is a really big explosion. Didn't expect that. So let's, uh, we're gonna make another Mars. That is a huge explosion. I kind of want to see what it looks like from the surface, actually. Whoa, look at that. Mars is all molten and there's this huge, fiery um, atmosphere around it. Well, that Mars is finished. Uh, or maybe it just started to, to form into something beautiful. Okay, let's do it again from this here. 
Yay! All right, perfect. Now there's no way it's gonna miss, right? Yeah, it's going straight for it. It's going straight for it. If you were to stand on the surface of Mars, this is what you would see right now. Oh no, there's Pluto coming. Oh no. Oh, that is so scary. Look at that. Imagine one day you'll actually see this. Uh, you will probably never see this, but it's possible. Basically, a huge object, like a dwarf planet or something, falling directly toward you. That's pretty. It's pretty scary, I think. Um, this is like science, fi science fiction material right here. You get to see the, all the details of Pluto as it approaches you. Uh oh. Oh, oh, Mars number two, you're in trouble now. Uh, we're gonna zoom out in a second, and I just wanted to see what it looks like right before it hits us. Whoa, that is so cool. That is so cool. That is so super cool. Look at that. Okay, and pause. Awesome. Look at that awesome view. Huge Pluto right in front of our um, Pluto star. And there's a Mars burning in the background. That's pretty cool. Okay. So they're about to kiss each other. Let's see how this looks like from maybe this angle. Let's decrease this a little bit. And here we go. Here we go. Collision in three, two, two and a half, one, point zero. And here we go. No, wait, no, no, never mind. Here we go. Wait, what, what, what? Where are you going? What just happened? No, <laughs> no, why are you doing this to me? Where are you going? Are you, did you just seriously change your trajectory and start moving away? What is happening here? Why is it doing this? No. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but for some reason Pluto is not being cooperative today. Um, okay, I need to, because my game is getting really slow, I'm gonna disable some of this stuff that is flying around here. I don't know why you changed your direction, but you shouldn't have done that. It just literally bounced off from like upper atmosphere or something. Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. And, oh, finally, finally, look at that, gorgeous. Beautiful. Excellent. Exciting. So many fragments flying around. Uh, so this is kind of uh, how our moon was formed in, in a sense. Not exactly like that, but uh, an object size of Mars smacked into Earth and uh, a bunch of fragments flew into the other um, region of Earth and then started orbiting around Earth and accreted into moon. At least that's the theory behind it. We don't really know exactly how it happened, but that's the theory. There's a lot of fragments flying around now, so if I were to accelerate time, we would see that they would, uh, with time at least, they would start approaching each other and and or become meteorites and so on and so forth. So uh, we're not really going anywhere with our um, terraforming mission, so let's start that. Let's actually terraform a little bit. Ganymede is going to be our new moon. Let's actually place a bunch of them. And we're gonna try to see if we can maybe terraform some of them. Let's start with these four. See if we can do anything with them. Uh, okay, so the temperature of Ganymede is already super hot. That was pretty fast. Which means that I may have to go into the settings here and decrease its albedo. Oh, sorry, increase its albedo to like 99. Let's see if this helps. Maybe this will help. Oh, it's also getting a lot of tidal power because I did enable tidal heating. I think that's why it heated up so fast. It's because of the tidal heating. Uh, essentially, it's getting a lot of tidal stuff from uh, from from the sun that we have here. Uh, tidal power is way too high here. So what happens is because of the tidal power, basically because it's so close to the sun or such a massive object, it starts heating inside, kind of like what microwave does. It basically, like if you rub your hands really fast. Um, your hands start heating up. So this is what's happening on the inside of this uh, uh, this satellite right now, this moon. And technically this is a planet because it's a star, this is this makes it a planet. And so it heats up and becomes superheated because I have enabled tidal heating from right uh, here. Now, we don't know if it's gonna stay um, at this temperature, but what we can do is we're gonna add a few things to it, like atmosphere. 
which would be right here. Uh, change atmosphere to one atmosphere. Oh, and it's already gorgeous. Look at that. Now let's throw some water at it. All right, not even throw water, but just add water from here. Uh, a little more. Give me a little more. Oh, that is so gorgeous. Holy cow. Look at this. Look how beautiful this looks. That's awesome. Uh, so that's Ganymede. Uh, potentially terraformed. I don't know exactly if we terraformed it successfully, but... Oh, yeah, okay. It's ter temperature is still increasing, so I need to decrease... Or increase albedo to 99. Albedo is the reflectivity of a planet. Um, essentially, how much light is going to reflect from from the from this particular star. And all right, so Ganymede is good. I think Ganymede is good. Habitable world number one. Let's make another one right here. Habitable world number two is going to be Europa. So cool. Look at that. It has like these canals everywhere. Um from all kinds of ridges that they used to have. Then we're going to increase albedo to 98, maybe 99. It tells me effective temperature right here, so that's what I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for it to be kind of, okay, that's good. Uh, kind of between zero and 20. And lastly, we need to do atmosphere. So atmospheric pressure is right here. Atmosphere of one as well. Perfect. Oh, now, where are your clouds? How come you don't have any clouds? Uh, what happened to your clouds? I don't know. Okay, so clouds are gone. Next is Dione. Dione is number three. Uh, Dione needs everything, right? It needs... Okay, I'll be this way too high. It's going to be at 98% albedo. It's going to have atmosphere of one, atmospheric as well. And we're also going to add, oh, beautiful. We're going to add some water to it. Come on, give me some lakes. I want some lakes and oceans. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh, transforming a little bit, a little more. Okay, so it's, uh, I think it's all ice right now. I just need to warm it up a little, making it 40 degrees. And melt. Is it melting? Is it melting? Wait, why is the water so... Oh, here we go. There we go. Beautiful. So this is a water world. It has um, quite a lot of... Wait, where's the water? I was going to say quite a lot of lakes, but I just realized there was no lakes. Maybe now? Maybe right now? Here we go. Uh, good. I just already, it's already blue, so it's kind of hard to see. Uh, so yeah, so we have three uh, potentially habitable worlds, but I think this is kind of not as fun as it could be. So let's actually do some crazy stuff. Uh, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna start adding more and more mass to Pluto, Pluto the star, and we're gonna turn it into something uh, massive. I'm gonna see what happens to these dudes right here. Um, so I'm gonna take my material, my power, and start throwing things at it. The okay, first thing that happens, obviously these guys come a little bit closer because gravity has increased. Their orbits will now be a little bit more elliptical too. So if I look at, it, at their orbit, uh, I don't know why it's blinking, but it's, uh, oh no, it's not, not elliptical at all. Interesting. Interesting. All right, so that's good. Well, here come here we come a little bit closer, and I should probably place a little bit more objects in a distance. So I'm gonna place Earth right here somewhere. I'm gonna place um, Mercury somewhere over here, and then I'm gonna go a little bit farther away, place Venus, and maybe even far farther away, place another Mars here, and maybe something else. Let's place a Jupiter somewhere really far here. So, let's make this into a neutron star. Cool, Jupiter. Um, let's, what we're going to do is we're going to start increasing its mass. I should probably disable the orbits because they're not really helping me. Ganymede is going to get swallowed by this new star. It's already really, really close to, uh, to the star itself. 
and it's about to get swallowed. So here we go. Change, change it to this object, and keep increasing the mass. So right now it's orbiting really, really close, and this is actually what happened early on in the formation of the solar system because a lot of these objects, um, a lot of the dwarf planets early on, a lot of the large asteroids, they actually got swallowed by the sun. They were either too close to the sun or they were, um, th their orbits were changed so that eventually they kind of got swallowed by random, for random reasons. Oh, we're just grazing the surface. There we go. Gone. One gone, two gone. And look at this. That is awesome. Holy crap. What is happening here? music got it really intense because suddenly we have these nuclear explosions everywhere. That is crazy. That is crazy. Beautiful but crazy. Alright, is anything alive? Oh yeah, look, Europa is still around. Now we have a bunch of fragments that are flying into the outer solar system, but they're gonna come back eventually when we got when our mass increases. So here it comes, I think this was Europa possibly. Uh... I'm going to keep increasing the mass. And this also kind of demonstrates what's kind of going to happen to our sun. It's not going to increase the mass, but it's going to grow just like this and eventually swallow Earth as well. So it had a nova, but not supernova because it doesn't have enough mass. Let's rename it back to Pluto. And well, first of all, let's look at what it, let's see what it looks like. Okay. It looks like an orange because it had a lot of collisions with different objects. Why don't you increase? No, my orange. This should be increasing too. Uh oh, that's not good. Uh, where, where did my Pluto go? No, you killed my Pluto. You killed my Pluto. Okay, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. This is not really working. What we're gonna do is, I just remembered, there's a simulation of... Uh, a very, very accurate simulation of our nearest stars in our uh, close to our solar system and I believe it is somewhere right here and I want to use Rigel from that simulation so you'll actually get to see uh, what it's like as well so let me just hold on let me just find it